I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, that this is what the creator of the heavens and earth will do to those who have not listened to him. Amen. Just Amen. in the same way. Hey, God bless you. <laughs> Just in the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah continued in their sin. God finally came and commits judgment. Lord, I ask you today to bless this message. Give me strength to speak your word, O oh Lord. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that you speak through me and that you provide for me your word as I commit my spirit unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Like a building, there are so many different types of pathways. It's the same in life. There are so many different types of pathways available to us today to follow. That it's no longer that we can't see is that we won't believe. Sadly, the one path that everyone should be on is the one that is least taken. God himself is not surprised by our decisions or the choices that we make in all our lives. In fact, Jesus spoke about it 2,000 years ago. He said that the pathway to eternal life would be straight and narrow. And that in that pathway, few would find it. He said that the pathway that it leads to eternal life would be straight and narrow. Ask yourself this question today, ladies and gentlemen. Are you on the straight and narrow path? The other path is a path that many of you find yourselves on. That path is very broad. It's called the broad way. And it contains all other ways that lead in opposite direction. But ultimately, the end of the broad way leads to destruction, eternal condemnation. That path will eventually reveal that the majority of the world's souls are on it. Many of you think that the way that you are living is right and that you are held accountable to no one. But what you don't understand is that in the end, God will hold you accountable to your sin. And just like with Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross for all our sins, death is ultimately the payment. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe that many of you here today understand or comprehend the understanding of eternity and hell. For surely, if we knew exactly what hell was, we wouldn't be on the road that leads to hell. Now, with that being said, I say again that the other path, the path that many of you are on today, leads to eternity in condemnation. And Satan is having a field day that's getting good and started.
He encourages the activities of false prophets and antichrists. Things of this world are being chosen over the Savior. People are actually preparing themselves for the lake of fire to be with the one that they chose to follow. God says to many people today, if you choose to follow Satan, then you will go to the place that Satan is going. The question is, do you want to go to that place? People are preparing themselves for the lake of fire. His did God really say line is working, hook and sinker, because many people are lining up for genocide, thinking that they are doing the right thing. Satan has a version of doing the right thing, and it is the farther from doing the right thing. So are you understanding that version or are you upgraded to the version of righteousness and holiness? The same line that he used to lie to the people is the same lie that he's using today to pull you in. Just as he did with the couple that were in the Garden of Eden. That's Genesis 3. End time prophecy is being revealed and completed at record pace. The next major event will be the taking up of all the true believers in Christ. To meet the Lord Jesus in the air, it will take place as the word of God says it will. And those who are left behind will only have themselves to blame because they have chosen to believe the lie. Paul's reference in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 to the twinkling of an eye has been calculated by the mathematical experts as in fraction of one second. Some say it would be impossible. But you see, what many don't understand is that nothing is impossible with God. So why would you stay limited with man who does not have the power? Satan knows what his outcome is. What his outcome will eventually be. But many of the people here today don't know their eternity. They think that their eternity is something in the books made by men. If they just be good enough, they'll get to heaven. But you see, with Satan, he has not slowed down his deceptions. Not one single bit. You know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe and God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God?
to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day, 